there's got to be a better way, a more entertaining way to, to talk about this. So that, that was the idea for the event, that it might be cool to have some candidates who can imagine that they have powers and then uh, envisage what they would do with some of the challenges that the, the city is facing. So obviously the, the terrible housing shortage and the housing conditions that it's forcing a lot of people to live in or, or lack of housing um, conditions, um, things like the transport and what it might mean for the development of infrastructure or whether we could move faster on, on some of the, the big issues that are facing Dublin. Um, tonight we've got five candidates. Um, who we've purposefully not chosen politicians because they all lie. Um, <laughs> Except those in the room. Apart from the back there. Even in the dark days of the 70s and the 80s, we were building social housing, so what is our excuse now? I live in Ballybock in the north inner city, and I walked around there at the weekend and counted tens of boarded up flats. In July of this year, the Peter McBerry Trust identified 2,571 vacant social housing units in the Dublin area. If the council can't afford to do up these units, or if bureaucracy is holding them back from taking the steps that they need, why not ask for help? Why not offer tax incentives to local tradesmen and women and community members in exchange for their help or their skills to redevelop local social housing? This might boost community spirit, would help keep money and skills within the local economy. I think of initiatives like Granby Park in 2013 and more recently the Mud Island Community Gardens and the Summer Road Gardens in the North Inner City. I think these have shown that allowing local communities to make even short-term use of vacant spaces with the support of their local councils has a positive effect on the local community. And it's up to us to take the opportunities that present themselves. So if you take Brexit for example, there's a lot of talk about all the challenges that that's going to provide and how terrible it's going to be for all of us. But I think if you actually look at some of the opportunities that exist there, I think we've got some really uh, tremendous opportunities to do really good stuff. So there's, over in the UK, there's, there's literally thousands of, of companies that are looking at the, the Brexit situation and they need to have somewhere where they can sell into Europe and beyond because the deal they're going to get from Europe is not going to be great. And I think, uh, I think everybody should acknowledge that. And we are the logical place for them to invest. We speak their language, we have the same legal structure, same taxation structure, same accounting, all of the, all, so for your average small UK company, or medium sized UK company, this is the logical place to come. You know, one of the things that I think is the most important for us to borrow, and I think it's something that is just inherent in the hearts of every Dubliner, is the idea of philanthropy. And if there was any way I ever got to be a mayor, I would change the name mayor of the city to Ministry of Magic. And I would make it about I would make it about joining up the amazing work that the citizens of Dublin do in their communities. That there's a lot of people who are falling into that category uh, in Dublin, including myself. You know, um, I think the grey hair gives it away. But this ageing population is not a problem, and an awful lot of people think it is. Instead, it is a solution, and it is something that I think we really need to tap into. We need to identify that part of our population has wisdom, has experience, has been around the block and is actually actively available to help and to hand down that wisdom to the next generation. And it's also a point about um, the uh, infrastructure and the amazing built heritage that we have, which is currently struggling between what has already been uh, noted as you know, dereliction, vacancy, and also underused uh, residences all around the city. I think we need to start bringing these dots together and joining them up and putting uh, new ideas into old places and activating them. The reason why I succeed as a mayor of Dublin is because I've experienced, the, 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 I've experienced being a poor student, I've experienced universities who have gone through the recession. And the biggest highlight for me was when I was in UCD. We used, we were, our, the School of Law was in Robot Castle. Robert Castle was beautiful, but it was old. We used to have to wear layers of jackets in class. We used to catch colds all the time because it was so cold because it was such an old building. And they were currently building Sutherland School of Law for us, but then the building it was stopped because there was no more funding. So we were there trying to study law in freezing, freezing classrooms. Our fingers, we used to wear gloves in the class because it was so cold. And this university couldn't afford to continue building our new building. I was, I was quite lucky that eventually my final year at UCD, we got into Sutherland because Peter Sutherland donated €4 million Euro to complete the building of, of um, our law school, not the government, 
So what I would do, what I would, what I would push as a mayor of Dublin is I would push for private investments into our third level of education because... But the first thing I would do, which I think it was George or some other person mentioned, is a free Wi-Fi all over Dublin. If you're on the street of Dublin, you will get free Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is extremely important in every city. And that will encourage a lot of development, economic activity. That will you know, encourage people um, to interact with uh, others. I know that internet is not always a good thing. But if you have, what am I saying, it's not a good thing sometimes, is that a lot of people, if you look at social media, is causing more harm than good in some cases. But if you have free Wi-Fi and you don't have credit on your phone, you can make free calls through WhatsApp and other things. So that is why I will be bringing in free Wi-Fi for everybody in Dublin. Then, to ensure that uh, there is no crisis during my administration, I will propose that all my opponents that did not get elected would join my cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Aside then from kind of being vacant property levies, uh, PPPs, going, going, to, going to the, the markets and getting money at like, low cost. George and Anna, any other, any other ideas about how we'd raise money to kind of get, get, to get your great plans away? Okay, so my approach is completely different. And I would be thinking that an awful lot of the systems that we're describing and talking about here are mediocre attempts to keep in place a system that worked when we were in agriculture and industry-led society. So my experience is that money is like a tap and that when you turn it on, it actually starts to flow and when it flows, it gathers speed and momentum and it carves out a niche and everybody follows it. If you see opportunities and you indulge uh, the right people to follow those opportunities, the economic benefit is a side product of the meeting of the opportunity itself. So I would be looking at where is this standing money which is not actually in government, most of it is in the 1% and 2% in the pockets of those corporates and big business leaders, where is that standing money? And then I would be looking at who are the key income generators in the country, and they are, believe it or not, the nano businesses, the small people who are working at scales of 1, 2, 3 and 4, those are the people who are driving 95% of our economy. The designers and creatives who have the ability to see things that nobody else can see and join the people together, join the money and the, now the whole kind of uh, enterprise Ireland and uh, local enterprise offices have the right idea, but they have precluded these people for, cent for decades because they, they never saw that these are the people who now hold the reins. Okay. Now, Robert, you, do, you, do you see any other inventive ways of getting money? Robbing banks? <laughs> Our banks don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> Not Ulster Bank. <laughs> for, for me, in all, in all honesty, when I listen to the budget 2017, the fact is they're not actually they're not hiding money. There isn't like much money. We have like the debts in line bill that we have to pay. There isn't much money in government. So what I again I am I don't want to sound too capitalist, but I'm very big in look sourcing that private investment. As as much as Private investment means that we're living from landlords. Again, if it's regulated, I believe that these, these like Google would love if they could have an apartment, an apartment block named after them. Like if you have, like, for example, what's McDonald's got to do with sick children? Here, yeah, they have uh, yeah. is McDonald's sick. Well, McDonald's, McDonald's house. house. Yes, yeah, um, under my leadership, uh, any house that is vacant for 90 days becomes unoccupied property and you have to pay a tax to be determined by the council. Apart from that, if it remains unoccupied for five years, I will use compulsory purchase order. Okay? Because you know as a mayor I have the power to issue that compulsory purchase of any property. I will do that. Next question is to Chance. You mentioned during, during your presentation earlier about the idea of a citizens assembly. Like, can you talk to me about like how the citizens assembly will be empowered? Talk to me about what they do. Well, I just think you know. I know we're in the age where people are tired of experts, which I find personally kind of terrifying. 
But I do also think, I mean, I was talking about that with regards a kind of a real and a workable solution to the current rental crisis. And I think a couple of years ago, you know, I noticed that a lot of uh, <coughs> landlords in the area where I live in the, in the north inner city, because of the new uh, anti-bed set rules, were just selling off property at knockdown prices because there was no incentive given to them. Not that I'm on their side, by the way, but there was no incentive given to them to redevelop the property. So property's going on the market, it's being sold, it's being bought up again, no changes are being made, there's no improvement to the quality of, of social housing. And I think that was the first step on an important process towards improving the quality and you know, the amount of, of, of rental accommodation on the market. But there's kind of been no follow through. Um, and I do think that you know, if we were to gather together a group of people, people from you know, the landlord sector, people from the rental community, and the number of experts from overseas, there might be some value in, in, in getting those people together in order to put together a plan. Um, I think in terms of the development of the community uh, policing side, um, there is, I think there's massive scope for, for in improving that. Um, what they do, in, and frankly what they do in, in, in other cities, in the UK and in Northern Ireland and uh, in, in, in America, is that businesses actually pay for, uh, for, for a police presence. So they pay for, an, for additional recruitment of additional police uh, and they then work, within, uh, they work in, in community contexts within, uh, within the district. And that has that that has been hugely successful. Um, yeah. for, without there, having to arrest anybody or do any do, do anything danger, dramatic. Is there not a danger though then that you end up with all the guardy on Grafton Street? No, because and it, nobody. Beside, no, you know, from no, North no, City. no, no. The the model actually the model actually developed in, in Belfast where during the the, the troubles the RUC uh, did not uh, police uh, the, the the business district. The, basically, what you the the way that model works is you'd have a baseline of this is the the general living level of policing that's going to be provided but if you want additional police you pay for them mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the recruitment takes place because of that um, so it is it's it's, it's purely additional uh, policing and I think uh, I think that would work uh, uh, so just very 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 again I am happy to announce that the next uh, possible mayor of, of Dublin with only two votes more than his um, second run of is uh, Richard Guy oh. thank you Thank you very much, everybody. This is a, a very unexpected honour, um, and I look forward to serving you all. Uh, for <laughs>